Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV. I'm so excited and I just won't hide it. My name is Lauren Michaels Harris. I'm your host and you have found your way somehow, hopefully on purpose, inside today's installment of Bathrobe Moments. It is the 23rd day of June. Uh, welcome and happy Pride Month. It's Petey the Pride Bear. How are you today? What? Oh, happy and happy and happy. Where's There it is. How's everybody doing? How's your week going so far? We are at Wednesday, which means we're working downhill in a good way towards the weekend. So tell me how you're feeling on a scale of one to 10. 10 being I'm fantastic, I'm fabulous, everything is good. Can I get an amen? Drop it in the comments, I wanna know. And so let me see, real quick, cause I don't wanna talk a lot today. I have two guests here today and I don't wanna miss any of that and I'm sure you don't, but I wanna remind you how grateful I am. I tell you every day how important it is that we fulfill the promise, which says that where two or more of us come together, it's not that something might, could, should, perhaps might happen. It is a given. It is a promise. It is a covenant that something wonderful will happen. And we're going to make sure that happens again today. That is the bell of purpose. When you hear it ring, it's ringing on purpose. So take what's on the screen, in the air, all of the vibes, the frequency, what have you. Take it with you and do something with it on purpose. Can I get an amen? Okay. And also at this time, as we do every day, help me welcome my version of Ed McMahon. She's my sidekick. She's here every single day, has been for six years. This is Lucy McGillicuddy Ricardo. And today she brought with her some of that mochi. What's I hate when she brings this one because I can't pronounce it. Mochiachi or Mochiati or something. 
It's, I think that's Japanese, right? I should get Alexa to translate. Anyway, it's coffee. Mm. So what's in your cup this morning? Drop it in the comments. I want to know. I want to know. So not much going on. I didn't watch the, listen to the news. I did listen to uh, BBC this morning, but I forget something. Oh, that bombing thing. And I think it was Israel. Um, just said, pray for healing. We need it. We all do. And uh, it happens with the conversation, which we're going to have here today. I did want to uh, tell you guys, did you see that post? I posted on my page last night around 10 p.m. Laying in bed with my Sally Jesse Raphael glasses on. I put them on at nighttime, you know, um, reading a script. I know. Who would have thought? A couple weeks, July 4th is the 59th birth date for me. And I would have never, if you'd have told me that I would be reading a script for a movie. Uh, at 59 years old, last time I did something was Little Abner, 12th grade spring musical, Niles Senior High School. So I tell you what, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Is he good? All the time. So there it is. There it is. Don't ever put anything away where you can't go back and find it. You just might need it or want it later in life. So there you go. So today we have a father daughter team with us. Uh, Schaefer Suggs and uh, his daughter, his lovely daughter, Faith. Now, there's a third component to that family, the son who is not here, but we're going to show you something about him anyway. And before I bring them in, I wanted to share uh, just a little bit. Now, you guys know, I tell you, uh, I, I'm not techie. I hate all this clicking around in the background, but we're going to start with the patriarch first, the father, uh, Schaefer, and give you a little input, a little insight, rather. Take a look. Okay, you get the picture, right? So that's one down, two to go. And I'm going to show you uh, Faith because she's here. Let you get a little a little uh, peek into her. And then we're going to show you the brother, um, Jalen, in a little bit after we get the the other two in here, the, the other two Schaefers. Schaefers, Lord Jesus. Was that a senior moment? Better not be. I rebuke it. Right. So here, take a look. In the fall of 1996, Schaefer and Susan Hoster Suggs were expecting their firstborn, but they were not expecting to hear some news that would change their lives forever. When my parents found out they were pregnant with me, my mom had melanoma cancer. It was, it was very scary. It was very, very, very difficult because um, it was like a level four. And at that time, we had not named our daughter. I said, there's only one name for this little girl. It was Faith. Everyone has a story of why they are who they are. On February 3rd, 1997, Faith Suggs was brought into this world a natural-born fighter. Having a father who played professional football, Faith found her passion in the sport of basketball. Faith Suggs. Well, not really looking for a shot. They set up Suggs. And there's her first points of ACC play. Whether it's on the court, off the court, Faith is just always very passionate. She has a lot of love in her heart. And she will do absolutely anything for this team, for you know her friends and family especially. Or you can ask anybody on the team. If you guys have a spirit, hands down, it'll be fair. 15 out of 15. He's such a fighter. You know, I've got a picture on in my office of wow. and she's ripping a ball, um, going after a loose ball and kind of ripping it. I think that embodies her spirit and her fight. You know what? It's a good thing Faith didn't go in the military. Because I pity fool that have to be underneath her watch. Get out of give me a hundred. 
I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen, oh, well, can you tell she's a natural born leader? We're going to find out more about that and a lot of other things. We gave you a, a, a little backstory there, but there's a lot more. So you know what we do at this point, everybody. Uh, let's get on our P's and Q's and let's let's bless in the way that we would like to be blessed. What I mean is get your hearts on the screen and put your hearts into the screen and into this conversation as we bring our guests to the stage. Here they come, Faith Suggs and her father, Schaefer. Well, hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Y'all like it like that or you like the other one? It's up to the superstar on the bottom. I know. What, what, what say you? I'm good. Either way, I, I, have, I have her looking over my shoulder now. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? I'm going to leave it like this. I like this. Yeah, there you go. I feel taller. <laughs> yeah, I can get even taller. There. I'm just kidding. I, uh, how are you all? How are, but wait, start over. Mm, I'm, I'm grounding. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm back. You got to do what you got to do to uh, ward off those senior moments. I'm not kidding in faith while you laugh and you know they start as junior moments. So better be trying to catch up, huh? I know. I know. I've been the daughter. No offense, Dad, but I've been the daughter of the se of a senior my whole life, so I see it all. Oh my goodness. He does look great for his age, though. I'll give doesn't he though? Yes. People would have no idea. Uh-uh. No, no, they wouldn't. I'm so excited that you two are here. First of all, let me say congratulations on your show passing just recently, the one year mark. When was that now? It was last month? April. Yeah. April. It's been that long already? Mm -hmm. I remember that's when I started reaching out. Then I was like, oh, they got to come on the show because it's been a year. So before we get into the backstory of uh, the entire uh, dynasty and backstory, let's talk about um, you guys. So I'm going to dip out for a second and you guys just introduce yourselves tell everybody where you're at in the world today because i know you're in different locations and um bring in your brother and uh jalen and 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 speak for him if you could and you then mean i'll pop you mean Devin? <laughs> you know what though i'm looking at cool. jalen suggs was our brother and son yes. <laughs> jalen suggs the gonzaga standout was related to us who is he He's a superstar, potential NBA draft pick. That's how you mixed it up. Is he is he related to you for real? No. Well, you know, when you Google your family, he pops right up there. Well, you know, I'm, you well, know what? You know what, though? Those Sometimes those mix-ups can be good. I've had two gigs uh, brought to my table because they were Googling Lauren Michaels from Saturday Night Live, and we share the Google page. And while they were like, well, wait a minute. Who is this? So I tell you what, everything happens with purpose. So wait a minute. So spell his name. D E V Y N. D E V Y N. I gotta go because I saw him. I thought he. Do they look alike? Yeah. That's, well, they do. I hope they end up the light skinned kids. You know, they all good looking. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, well, maybe I don't know. Wow. Thank you. No wonder y'all were looking all in the green room. Like, What's wrong with them? They don't like the coffee. So anyway, um, I'm glad you guys are here. Introduce yourselves. Tell everybody where you are in the world, and then we'll get started. Yeah, I am Faith Suggs, daughter to this wonderful man next to me. Uh, I graduated from Duke University in 2019, where I played four years of on the women's basketball team. Uh, I then carried on and did two years as director of basketball operations and social media manager with Long Island University Women's Basketball. And from there on, I moved to Kansas, and I now started my new brand company, Brand by Faith. I am the founder and CEO, and we are also the beautiful co-host of Faith Family Focus. And, and I'm Schaefer Suggs. I'm so blessed. Um, you know, and just to give it back to up, um, one of the reasons that we started this show was was because of, mm -hmm. of and we I got a chance to meet him at a Rotary Club, and uh, he was the inspiration to get us started. And uh, so, you know, I always want to you know, give him kudos to that. He's a wonderful, wonderful friend. He's done a wonderful job. Um, I'm a former NFL football player. I have a long, long story uh, that we have tried to tell our story over the last year and a half, faith, family, focus. We use our faith and our life experiences to strengthen the, the, the family core, which is basically all about what we have shared and what I have revealed through all my lifetime. And our show basically faith, family, focus is not really 
uh, guest driven, but it's topic driven. And we have been able to really deep dive into some really, really good topics. Uh, I am currently retired. Uh, I have my own uh, life coaching company, Inner Winner. And uh, I didn't know that. I, I belong to several non for profit organizations, the NFL Players Association. Uh, there's a local uh, organization, Lauren, that you probably know. It's Lowe's and Fishes. I'm actually on oh yeah, Lowe's and Fishes, and uh, and uh, so yeah, we we have gotten really active over this last year, year and a half. So it's just been a wonderful journey, and uh, we we thank you for you inspired us. And mm. the first time uh, we had this conversation, I was petrified. I was like, okay, from the time we had our initial conversation, two weeks later, we were actually live. Mm-hmm. Not quick it, sorry. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. I'm glad to hear that. I knew it would be. So, you know, I already gave y'all a warning. The first thing I want to get is, okay, I would like to hear from each of you what your, your highlight moment over the last year around your show. It might have happened when you were storyboarding it, um, getting the guests in, figuring out who's going to say what, where, and when. Uh, so let's start with the highlight, and then we, we, we'll... Turn down the lights, sweet darling, so we can hear the other side. So who wants to go first? Biggest, your fondest memory from the last year? Um, I think my fondest memory in general, mm, towards the end of our season one, we started getting the topics where I started to learn more and more about my father in a light that I did not know him oh. um, as a person, as an adult. And so um, it's not a specific memory, but it's more around that time period. It's, we now have this new relationship with the show thanks to the show that I see him and I learned some new stories from all his buddies that come on that I did not oh, know. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. But are beautiful that. and amazing and it gives me an inside look into who he was before me. And so now we've, I think we have a lot stronger relationship now because of that time period for sure. Yeah, and you guys already had like, mm, I'm talking um, super glue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Really, because you have a hashtag. Girl yeah. dad, dad girl, what is it? He's girl. He is the ultimate girl dad. The ultimate girl dad, and that is not an e well. Wait a minute, is it girl dad or is girl wrapped around dad's finger? Well, dad's wrapped around girl's finger. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, because the only girl, and uh, but you only have two, you have one of each. That's a great balance. And so, Faith, awesome, Schaefer, what's your highlight from the last year? What, what, what is what is uh, well, what to you the most? That's that's a that's a really Difficult question because there's been so many moments um, that that we've experienced. I think one of my finest moments, feeling moments, uh, was having my former high school football coach on on our show. He's 84 years old. Wow. He just lost his his wife to, to COVID, and uh, oh. I actually surprised him with four other former teammates that he did not know were going to be on the show from high school. From high school, wow. yeah. These guys all went on to play professional. They all professional, and we had we we we, we surprised them, and uh, mm -hmm. it was it was it was probably the. And we we've had a lot of great moments, um, and to, to face point, you know, this experience has revealed a lot about uh, us a family. But we have grown so much as a father daughter, father daughter son, uh, simply because of the topics that we have. We built, we made ourselves vulnerable to share with people. And then we've been able to bring in guests to support some of those stories. So um, there's been a lot. I mean, we've had a lot of really powerful guests. Faith had her former Duke basketball coach on there who was just revealed that she uh, was uh, is bipolar. She has this wonderful mm -hmm. book called, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, Secret Warrior. Secret Warrior, right, right. Secret Warrior. And, uh, Coach Joanne McCauley, who's actually on uh, uh, the- uh, Good Morning the, America. Good Morning America, right? And she she came on the show. That was just really nice because uh, in that story, before you read the Faith story, he's in that story. She's featured in that story also. Because she also had melanoma, just like uh, Faith, uh, uh, my, my wife, uh, Sue had. And okay. So our connection, but uh, there's been so much. As you well know, you know, doing these shows, there's so much that uh, you you grow a lot of strength and a lot of growth from, and uh, for us, you know, people, um, um, they, you know, our comments are really really kind of neat because when we see a good comment that they kind of touch someone's lives, that makes it all work. 
Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, uh, Devin, mm -hmm. not to be confused with his lookalike, Alan, <laughs> um, Devin is at Yale. Um, this is his second year, right? Yes, he's going to. Man, it seems like he just left. I remember. Wow. Mm -hmm. God, yeah. it just flies by. How's he doing there? Uh, well, he, he's good. You know, he's transitioning into that college time period where he doesn't want to talk to anybody but his personal growth right now. So it's funny because we get we hear from him far in between. Um, but he's enjoying it, you know, enjoying football, enjoying classes, getting the hang of it, he's, you know, getting a job at a research lab. So oh. trying to touch on everything that he can at one of the top schools. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. He truly is a Suggs because, you know, what happened at working at Pizza Hut? Man, he goes right to the I don't know. He is definitely a second child thing. I worked at a gym. I participated in that. I sold in smoothies and everything for my college stuff, but he went straight to the science, psychology science lab. So um, definitely. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations. And we send all a lot of light, love and support uh, to Devin's uh, space and hold space for all of you. Thank you so much for that uh, catch up time. So Tell us about, if you would, and, and when I throw these out, whoever wants to take it, just take it. But um, let's talk about the relationship, the triad, because you have a you. It's it's an interesting dynamic, um, because it seems like you guys are not only uh, you know where you fall in the in the echelon of the Suggs line, but you're you seem to be really good friends, maybe even best friends. Talk about that and how's the what's the difference? Because a lot of people always say, "Oh, you don't want to be your 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 child's best friend," this sort of thing. How do you feel about that? Is it possible? <laughs> um, uh -oh. It's funny because we talk on this all the time, and we t highlighted a lot in the show on on that exact conversation is how okay. these kids. And it's funny because I don't think as we were as I was being raised and Devin was being raised, I don't think we had a best friend relationship with our dad. I think we could have. Uh, just because of the dynamic and how um, he had to balance two roles. He had to be dad, mom, and figure out mm. everything far in between. But once he, we, I think I graduated high school, went into college, and started my own independent journey and started making my own life decisions, then I think that our relationship transferred over to that best friend, friend, adulthood, conversation, and relationship. And, um, I, but I think that came from me leaving the nest, me experiencing things and making decisions for my own. And that space kind of brought us even closer, especially when we started Faith Family Focus. Mm, awesome. Schaefer, how, uh, how about you? Yeah, I agree with Faith. Like I said, we, we try to uh, touch on topics that um, nurtures or reveals our relationship. And even over this past year, year and what, two or three months, I've seen a tremendous amount of growth, uh, and I, and you know, as, I as a father, you know, uh, have learned a lot about uh, myself as a man. You know, uh, I've learned a lot about my, myself as a father, as a friend, and it's all through maybe some of the topics. Um, the difference in the way I raise faith, the difference between I raise Devin, mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot of. Uh, of what not to do with Devin. I mean, I was very driven with Faith. Um, you know, I was her coach. I was her, I was her dad, and I had to learn how to separate those two. Mm -hmm. And you know, both my kids are psychology majors. So one one thing that Faith has been able to do with her own maturity and her growth is being able to um, um, understand what her purpose is mm -hmm. and understand um, how to communicate boundaries and how to put up, uh, you know, uh, and, and we, we have really never been over this past year, we've never had a, a real difficult time um, with our show uh, because of, of me understanding her growth. And now I'm going through the same thing with Devin. So Devin is 19 years old and Devin is doing Devin. Mm. And dad is pretty much on the outside looking in, right? So if I want to find something about Devin, I ask my daughter Faith. I was gonna say, <laughs> oh, she know, right? Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, that goes full circle, right? It goes yeah. full circle. They're four and a half years apart, but I've learned a lot. And fortunately, you know, we we relied a lot on faith, and she had to learn. Well, not she had to learn. 
she basically said, listen, I'm not going to be the referee. You guys got to figure that out yourself. You know, I need to take care of me, you know, and uh, in, in that light is, is really allowing me to nurture that relationship with my son. And a lot of it is our slogan, let go, let God, let go, let faith, let go, let love, mm-hmm. let go, let God, right? Let mm-hmm. go, allow him to navigate his own path. Mm-hmm. Right. And, right. I agree. And it's hard. It's hard. We just talked about that. We had a show on Monday called Faithful Fatherhood, right? A lot of it is just, you know, how do you, how do you stand, stand, you know, how do you, how do you step in? And how do you step step out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind yeah. of balancing that right now because I have to also remember, and you can probably relate to this, um, it, your 19-year-old Lauren, and your 19-year-old oh. Sandra, you know, yeah. what our mindset was, you know, and our ambition. And, and uh, you know, we, we, oh, yeah. we wanted to, so I have to sit back and, okay, let me just, <laughs> hopefully I've given them all the life tools to navigate right. this, but just, this, uh, and I learned a lot. I mean, my, my daughter has really allowed me to to kind of trip through this. And uh, you know, once in a while, she'll say, hey, Dad, uh, you know, uh, you know, he, he'll come around. And he will. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can hear that coming from, from Faith. And I'm going to back it off real quick so we can see her looking over your shoulder so that I always, can always. push this <laughs> point forward. So <laughs> let's talk about for a second, if we could. Um, Schaefer, at what point did you start realizing that Faith, at what age did she start assuming the role that Susan left open? Um, because that, I believe, I just have a feeling it started probably in some sense immediately. Immediately. It was instinctive. Uh, Faith has always been a, just like uh, a Kyra Lambert said in the video, Faith was that person. Mm. She's a nurturer. She's that person. And uh, she became that. She assumed that role. I watched her leadership grow. And again, that was one of the things over this last couple of years. I've watched her you know, say, Dad, you know, uh, I, I need to be able to do me too. You know, I got to take care of me. Mm. You know, and boundaries. Yeah, you know, I got to have these boundaries. And mm. uh, so, you know, in that, I was able to really respect that growth. But right. she, that was immediate. I mean, just her nurturing, loving, and just like her mom was was it was almost immediate. Wow. Faith, do you remember the transition? I mean, did you ever feel like um and I I I can see how you were using it inside of your athleticism, the mindset and stuff. So it wasn't like cuz sometimes when a person, because I dealt with a lot of kids, of course, who we we had a lot. That's how I ended up in the system. My mother, because it was a single family, um, single parent family. And when she was gone, there was no backup. So a lot of kids are in that in that position. However, a lot of us feel like we were cheated, like we had to grow up overnight. Right. And, you know, um, a lot of people say that when they refer to Michael Jackson, how, you know, that was what Neverland and all that was about. Uh, did you ever feel like you missed any of your childhood because of that transition? Yeah, all the time. I mean, it's funny because I can't remember at all the transition Mm -hmm. uh, during that time period. And I don't know if that's because we're 10, 11 years removed from that time period, but it's just, I don't remember the transition specifically, which is funny listening to him talk about it because he obviously has a different perspective on it and I was just living it. But um, the biggest thing that I struggled with, I think, as I get older and I'm now kind of figuring out like how to navigate and make decisions for my own life, um, is that I did miss out on a lot of things and it does impact, you know, how I interact with other people or how I make certain decisions or um, all types of things. And I actually invested in therapy this past year um, because I really wanted to kind of dive into my brain and like as I was nearing 24, 25. Mm-hmm. And what I learned was because of those time periods and where I had to speed up that growth process, I did skip a lot of normal like learning curves that kids got to have. Um, and that was something that I'm diving into now. It's just like un- like figuring out, you know, where those impact my um, confidence or where those impact like my need or drive to go chase a new opportunity or little things like that. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing is, is that I just missed out on opportunities where most kids would get to go run and play. I was more kind of like focused on this or I had to be at home or, or I was also going to be a collegiate athlete. So that kind of tied into everything. So um, I did miss out on a lot. I think it also went hand in hand with the fact that I was going to be 
a collegiate athlete. So some sacrifices had to be made already, plus the sacrifices to bring made. Um, but one thing is that, you know, God, you don't plan life, life plans you. And I think that that was my biggest thing that I had to accept. And I think that um, that mindset has helped a lot, especially in these last couple of years. Mm, awesome. That's great. Great. A lot of good stuff in there. We're going to take a short break. And when we return, I want to talk to our guest today about what it's like, not one, not two, but all three family members in a certain way on a certain day, having to be in the public eye. Um, that's something that you never can forget is happening. And we're going to talk about that. But before we do, have you had your vegetables today? Do you? <laughs> do you? Uh, I know I tell everybody this feels like vitamin to Vegemite, but I actually like it. I really do. And I'm on the low sodium can of V8, which of course is 100% vegetable juice, of course has 60 calories only per can and two, not one, but two servings of veggies. So if you have a problem getting those veggies, if you're not chopping or dicing something fresh into your diet every day, cover that gap with a V8. Just pop the top and the rest can be history. We'll be right back in just a moment with our guest, uh, Faith and Schaefer Sips. Don't you dare go away. Hello and welcome, everybody. Hey, today is an amazing. So that's important. And I love what you said. You know, this too shall pass, people. It's not permanent. Yeah. Whatever's going on. Okay, I was a little trigger happy. I know, you know, I don't know. I think it's a coffee. Everything was going like this and I hit the mouth. So listen, you guys, if you would like to get your dream on the screen, all of the content that you see as far as digital media uh, is, is created through one of my companies, Electric Revival. There it is, see, digital content creation. So if you need any help at all, you just wanna kick it to get some ideas, we'll be happy to do that too. Just get at me, DM me, and we'll get the ball rolling. I'm getting your dream on the screen. Back to our guests. Here they come. And there is that button in Alexa. She think I'm playing with her. She gonna end up in a garage sale if I ever get off my butt and have one. Alexa, please be quiet. <laughs> I, I said that to her once. I, I'm not kidding you. I swear I was upstairs. But I could have swore I heard her say, yo, you be quiet. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, keep playing. Go get your cord cut off. So, uh, so anyway, you guys, before we went to the break, 
Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about that. That's a very real thing. And the reason I think it's important, a lot of people um, are really stretching outside of their comfort zones. Uh, the, the pandemic made it available for a lot of people to get their messages out there in a big, big way. And so one of the things I think a lot of people neglect to take a look at and plan or uh, build into their plan is what to do when and if the time should come where the world is privy to everything inside your private Malibu Barbie dollhouse. Because that's what it is when you're in front of the public eye. It's like they can lift the roof right off and peek in. Talk about how you as a family cover that to make sure that you keep the sanctity of that triad that we mentioned earlier in the show. Um, you know, it's funny because I think I've learned all my media and everything when it comes to the public relations, all that type of stuff prior to Duke was learned through my father, uh, just through mm -hmm. how we're supposed to communicate and talk with reporters, how we're supposed to um, do press conference, all types of things. I think those are great tools and experiences that we got to have uh, from a young age. Both of us kind of know how to walk into an interview podcast, whatever it may be and, you know, perform well. But I think that one of the biggest things, and I think a lot of people are realizing this year that we learned very early is learning to be vulnerable with your story um, and understand that, you know, not everyone is there to receive your story, but mm. they're there to hear it. Say that again. And so I think that as long as you come into, you know, sharing and inviting people into your lives in that sort of sense, um, you have to accept the fact that it's your story and it's, it's really for you um, and how other people perceive it shouldn't bother you. But that was one of my biggest things is just being comfortable sharing your story because you're comfortable with your story. Mm, that was a golden one. Schaefer, what about you? Well, you know, what Faith mentioned, you know, one of the things about being a professional athlete is we spend a lot of time uh, being vulnerable on the field, off the field. And uh, they early on really tried to give us the tools to navigate that. And of course, back in the 70s and 80s, a lot different than it is now. So how I convey that message. Was it? <laughs> I, wasn't, I, I don't know. I'm a 90s baby. Well, so there, you I'm know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I play one on Facebook. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. See what, no. you do? See what happened when you lie? I choked on the V8. I'm yeah. sorry. Go <laughs> ahead, Chief. I, I apologize for button. Yeah, no, no. And there was so much that, that, that resonated with what Faith was saying because it's kind of getting into what's happening right now with, um, with her company is managing people's image and their likeness, uh, managing how the world, how do you want the world to see you, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and being able to brand yourself. And that started a long, long time ago, you know, when you sit after a game and, you know, my mom said, you need to make sure that you speak, right? You know, you articulate mm -hmm. words. Of course, yes. Being an African-American kid, you know, that perception, you know, and so she was always uh, pounding that home. And when they said that, that was something that was important because she's kind of lived in my world. Mm -hmm. She me speak and she see how important it is. But now it's a whole different world because how you handle the media, how you portray your image can be devastating. It can completely ruin you. And, yeah. and, and you know, with, even with Devin in the recruiting process, you know, when you get recruited, it was a lot different than, it was with faith because social media wasn't as big. It was big, but wasn't as big. Coaches that are recruiting you are looking at things that you post. They're watching your every move. They're watching the parents. They're watching everything that you do. So, you know, we're in an age of, 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 of branding and image, and it's very, very important that you put your best foot forward. Mm. One of the four agreements, always do your best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got something to say about that best foot forward theory. I'm going to tell you guys out there, this is for you. The bell rang. So back the car up. This isn't roadkill. It very well could be soul filled. Think about that. I'm going to let it sit there for a second. What I'm getting at is this. What Schaefer just said um, is really important. Best foot forward. But that only works if you are not on the traditional ladder, which pits us um, on a vertical plane where someone is above or below you pitting us in competition with each other. Turn the ladder horizontally. Keep your feet on the ground. Now, when you go forward, because there's no ladder rung in your way, you take everything good, everything bad, because there is nothing bad. You just take it all with you. We stay in the middle like the zero on the number line. And that's how we achieve balance. We are not in competition with each other. We're only in competition with time. We want to get it done. 
Can I get an amen? Okay, take that with you. So let me ask you this one. In your household, because in our household here, Brian and I, we knew from the beginning that he had a brand, I had a brand, and there would be that brand that we would create together. It's almost impossible as a unit, a collective under the same mindset uh, to not. So what my question to you is, I remember our conversation about, well, how does that work? Do you have a mission or vision statement? I have one, and then we have a third one. That is what we, cause you want, um, you don't want to, you know, that divide and conquer, you want a front, a united front, what we stand for. Talk about that and what it means to your family. Cause I know you guys have had these conversations. It's clear. In right. all you do. Talk about that. Right. So I think one of the biggest things that faith family focus is our main uh, brand, our main mission statement. It's very much using our story to help those around us with through adversity, through experiencing, through success. And I think that that's something that we all, the trio uses jointly, even though Devin isn't always on the show. It's something we kind of push across, mm -hmm. um, whether it's through speaking engagements, whether through just group events, the foundations we're involved in. Um, that's a big thing that we all share. Individually, dad obviously has his own individual stuff. You have a former NFL player, former corporate America, former, he's a widow. He's also has been sober for plus plus years, right? He has an amazing story mm -hmm. um, and he shared that with us. And now he's diving into life coaching. That all ties into his brand. My brand now is more specifically former Duke athlete, right? Academics first, faith. I participate in the Polka Dot Mama Melanoma Foundation and the Leeds Foundation with Benedictine College, which empowers young women. Mm. That's kind of along with my stuff. And I also am a brand manager. I push across social media and content creation. That's a big thing that's under my brand. And then we have Devin, who's starting to kind of figure out what he wants to do, right? Now, right now, all we have is smart football player. But um, in four years, who knows what he may be doing, right? He may decide to be a forensic psychologist. Who knows? Right. But in that time, he still is under our umbrella of the Suggs family and what we believe in and what we represent. Um, which is going to help him kind of tie things into his experience. Of course, he's not going to add something crazy off the wall, off brand to his brand. <laughs> like, right. But uh, I will say, I, you don't never know. But right, right. Not going to right. He, you know, but he, he, it's funny because he kind of buys into it. And he understands kind of what aligns with what, what we do. And it, it all comes you know, down to the fact that we have faith and we have that experience and those conversations early on that, that help us in that umbrella of things that align with us. Right. I love that. I love that. So how was COVID for you all? You started your show right on the, yes. the, the cusp um, of COVID. What was it like personally as well as professionally? Now, Faith, I know it was pretty rough on you. Uh, talk about you start. How? What, tell us how, how what, what went in and what came out. Right. Well, when COVID started, I was going into my finishing my first year as director of operations, which is in in a way a small way of saying coaching young women in women's basketball division one um crazy experience that we had to figure out you know how to do testing how to do this where were you playing in mask how are you, i had to do laundry it was a whole bunch of stuff so many people lost jobs and I, i'm extremely blessed to say that none of our girls did come down with COVID 19 of our staff members came with COVID 19 um and we never had to miss any games but there were some times where we would drive, say we were going to play in Connecticut, we would drive on the bus three hours and then get off the bus and they would say, sorry, someone had a positive test or they have been contact traced, you guys have to drive back and you'll play that game in two weeks. And so oh. that happened a lot. We we did a lot of stuff that you know would never happen to a division one program. And that's, I think the entire NCAA uh, did that as well. So definitely for me, it was a little crazy, but it did put things in perspective that that would be my final year. So I went through my second year of director of basketball operations and decided to focus more on what I really wanted to do, which was branding and kind of focusing on, you know, building a clientele for that. So uh, Brand by Faith is officially put together now as of June. Um, but I am happy with that. I miss coaching, obviously, but I am so happy to not. Um, I didn't know you'd switched over to mm -hmm. tell us just a little bit about don't I, are you itching to talk safer or can we Schaefer? Can we no, he's hear about brand? Let's hear about brand by faith real quick. What's inside of there? What's under that umbrella? Right. Brand by faith is basically a social media and brand creation company. Um, through working with, I work with college coaches. I work with magicians. I work with whoever and companies oh. that are looking to get a social media presence online. Um, and that is to kind of tell their story and own their image because everything now is digital. 
And if you're not ahead of the times, you're kind of behind. And so having people embrace it and own their image, especially yeah. in the NCAA has made, is making name image likeness legal for young college students to then embrace and make lucrative off, um, profit off of their image. Um, there's a lot of go stuff going on. So it's kind of the perfect moment. I have a website, faithsugs.com. Mm -hmm. What um, is it? Faithsugs.com. Oh, well, that's <laughs> easy to remember. Easy oh. to remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's still in the um, beginning stages, but I'm very excited for it because this is kind of, I think, a new major business that's going to be happening around this world. So um, you do content creation digital? Mm-hmm, yes. Oh, like my business? Yes. Guess what, Faith? Okay, I don't know what happened, where she went. I don't know. I'll just, I'll just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Right. I do more, I do more of the bigger, the brand stuff too. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just look, they know I do that to people all the time. Or the thing about, oh, shave, can it, it looks good? How do I look? Great. Can you move over just a little bit here? And they keep moving a little bit more until they're complete. I go there. And they go, like, you know, you try it. It never gets old. I'm not kidding. Your guests will thank you. Uh, so I am so excited. To, let's talk about, why don't you guys tell everybody what's on your plate for now that we're the restrictions are easing. Um, knock on wood, ring the bell. Let's let's hope it continues in that vein. But things are, 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 are lightening up. However, there's still a lot of fear. Still a lot of fear out there. I see people in their cars by themselves with their masks on. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do anything, but I'm like, okay, but good, good. What were you doing before there was a bag, you know, riding in the trunk? What were you doing? Let me out when we get there. And then throw, throw the keys out. Them. You know, they punch a hole. I don't know what they were doing. But let's talk about uh, now that I'm going to tell you, the world is starving for hope, um, starving for faith, uh, starving for something to believe in. And the reason I say starving, because there's a difference between people who are just simply hungry, like good old Les says, Les Brown, you got to stay hungry. Hungry people eat up anything, but starving people will, in most cases, eat everything. And so it's even more important for people like us, influencers like us, to make sure that we're offering content that is not zero calorie. It's not the equivalent of styrofoam. It's got nourishment uh, and everything that a person needs. So tell us what's on your plate, if you will. Like, like all these food analogies um, for 20 for the next year or so. How do, how, what do you plan to take? Where do you plan to take the show and your lives in the next year? Uh, we actually, since we just started our season two, uh, we're about 11 to 12 episodes in and we covered a bunch of things so far. We talked about, you know, my dad's story and his transition was a major, major step for him and, and kudos to him because the story is so special and not a lot of people had known it. Um, we also are talking about fatherhood in sports. We're trying to push the fatherhood mm. narrative. Um, nice. Faithful fatherhood. We want to dive into black fatherhood. We want to dive into um, setting goals. We had a really awesome uh, series on goal setting, which my dad is really great at. Um, we talked about how to set goals, how to apply goals. We talked about um, the what is the wheel of life, dad? Um, which was really special, but also bigger goals as spiritual, emotional, and physical. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of things we're doing to dive into, but I'm really excited for our Inner Winner series, which is going to talk about um, how to win in all aspects of your life. Mm. Um, so uh, we have a lot of great things to, get, to put together, but a lot of the stuff for season two is themed towards, you know, bettering yourself and how to set better goals for yourself. Because now as we're hoping that everything's starting to open up and everything is, everyone's getting more opportunities, people are changing jobs. Yeah. Kind of has the same narrative. How are you attacking that type of stuff and how are you embracing it? That's what we're kind of trying to cover. Mm -hmm. And and Faith, and, and Schaefer, I'm, I thank you for toning it down and, and, and letting Faith get a word in because you know, you, I don't know. You forgot she was here. Because <laughs> <laughs> Shaver would be just as happy just sitting there and watching. Sometimes I think he forgets he's on the show with you. And he's just watching the show. And you'll be like, I've watched it. And he'll, you'll be like, Dad, don't you want to say something here? <laughs> he's my cheerleader. <laughs> and he goes back, oh, yeah, I forgot I'm in the show, not watching the show. It's that good. Shaver, what about you? What's 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 next year got on it? Well, I, I find myself uh, there's a couple things I wanted to kind of loop back with, but then bring it back to to the current. But I find myself uh, enamored a lot of times listening to her speak. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it's and and I've learned how to because you know she's a product of 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 
of, of us, Sue and I. And right. so, so I find myself just just being uh, very blessed. And so I'm okay with just sitting back sometime and sitting in the back seat, we'll let her navigate. You know, getting back through that COVID year uh, as a parent mm-hmm. it was really uh, you know, watching her navigate, watching Devin navigate. So much happened to the kids. As a parent, it was hard to uh, uh, try to figure out how to support that, you know? Because, yeah. you know, they, there was so much going on. And then simultaneously, we talked about that, and then simultaneously we talked about what was going on last year. Well, a lot, you know, without getting too political, without getting too this. But we did need to bring that content to our show, mm-hmm. and it was important. And so that was that year. You know, so a lot, a lot has happened. And just to point out what, uh, reiterate what Faith said, this is a year, and you, 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 you said it, uh, Lauren, this is the year of hope. Yeah. And that's what we want to provide, some hope some inspiration, some goals, some redefining yourselves. And that's what our path this year, we put our, uh, our I think we kind of uh, plan out all the way into the end of July, what mm-hmm. our content is going to be. Wow. It, Cause that kind of helps us a little bit with, cause we're getting so much busier right now. You talk about you know, we have in three days, we may, we may scale back to maybe one day or two day simply because we're getting busier, but yeah. We get busier now, sure. Yeah, and uh, again, we we had a lot of guests. And we we do have we have planned out our guests, but like I said, a lot of our shows are more topic driven, and and we're not afraid to call it audible. You know, an audible is and we got something planned for Friday. Well, this whole image and likeness with the Supreme Court just yet. We did a show back in May of last year. We're gonna do another show on Friday. So. Mm-hmm. We, we're not afraid to call an audible and kind of change gears a little bit. And you know how that works. Oh yeah. With this show for, for over over six years, so um, yeah, you know, I find myself a lot in these shows. You'll see. You look at some of my episodes. You'll sit me. I'm just sitting back, just enjoying. It. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> you. I don't blame you. I'm good. Not at all. <laughs> I I you know I just love what you guys are doing, and I would love to as we we're rounding the corner to the last uh, lap of the, the interview. And if you could, uh, we'll start with you, Shaif. Uh, out of the three, faith, family, and focus, is there one of those that really stands out to you as your lead piece, or are they pretty much even? Oh, no, no, it's our faith, you know? It's our faith, and it's ironically, because you actually really kind of help with that, because, you know, the story of faith, my daughter, faith, we named her because we got over cancer. There was only one name for this girl, Faith. And uh, you know, we've done shows on just on Faith. And it's got to navigate. And of course, you know, it's gonna to apply to what people are going through this yeah. year. You know, we don't spend enough time on letting go and letting God. Allow mm. God to navigate through life. We don't do enough of that. And it's our faith. And uh, so uh, that I would say our faith. I agree. Uh, that's for me. Faith, what about you? Yeah, it's definitely faith. And for another reason for me, and not just because, I mean, obviously he has a major personal um, personal connection to faith because of our story. But but for me, it's, it's without faith, there is no family, there is no focus, there is no us. Our family is very much driven by our faith and our relationship with God. And, and you know, without it, I think that our mindset after major adversity would have been completely different. Um, and how we attack life and how we achieve things and how we battle, you know, hardship. Because it, it, that wasn't the only hardship we, we ever will go through. So right. I think that, you know, faith is our number one. Faith is the most important thing. You know, when we talk about these mugs, I mean, faith is number two, but it's the most important um, piece to our show and to our relationship, for sure. I agree. Thank you. And, you know, um, I remember when faith took a flip in my world. I thought I'd known. I'd grown up in a in a Seventh Day Adventist home, so it was like, you know, uh, as far as religion. But it was just going through the motions. It was another loosely used term, if you will. And I remember I was in a county jail, and I was praying. I guess it was a little bit audible, a little loud, because there was an old guy right down the way. And the next day, he yelled down to me after they brought the breakfast trays, and he goes, "Hey, young blood, I heard you praying last night." hasn't anyone ever told you that the only thing you can't pray for is faith 
because if you have to if it has to be given to you it's no longer faith mm -hmm. and that changed everything for me so i agree for me out of the three faith of course because after that you can do anything go anywhere and be everything so i really love that and um i just wanted to say if people tell it tell them again where the show airs how they can find it and um uh what kind of people do you bring on as guests do they write in do they do you pick choose them or can anyone send you something to say hey i think i got a story that you might like to hear how's that work right it's all and everything in between right so we take um people we know people we have relationships with stories yeah heard that we would love to have on or if people reach out to us we always end the show asking people to reach out to us and you know whether it's they have a story to tell or also they just have a topic they want to talk about we would love to have them on to ask questions or even discuss or try to navigate through some really hard conversations especially in this last year um the show airs monday wednesday friday at 9 5 a.m central time Wednesday, yeah, 9.05. Yeah. Wednesdays, we normally try to do a rerun that'll try to complement our show on Friday because I know Wednesday is not only hump day, but also people are trying to move and try to survive through the rest of the week. Um, today. We are on, of course, Facebook, E360 TV, uh, YouTube, Roku, um, all the type of stuff that we're on that E360 uh, provides for us. Um, and then, gosh, we also have www.faithfamilyfocus.net. So you can also see yes. a lot of shows there um season two will be uploaded within the next two weeks so if you guys don't see it you can but there you, you know roll down on our facebook page and have every single show on yes you do i was over there I mean, everything looks great i love your branding i love your message but more importantly um i love you all i love what you're doing and together it is the power of we separate it is the power of me so many today are dealing with all sorts of things from depression to loneliness and all the things that that fall inside of just feeling less than but remember those things can only really get in and attack when you are alone the promise says that when we meet as two or more wonderful things will happen and that is why you want to get to someone find out who is sitting check the stubs of the ticket holders who are possessing the front row seats in your life you'll need them more than you could ever know. So just make sure that person in front row center is not supposed to be in the mezzanine. That's what I'm saying. Can I get an amen? I just love you guys. Listen, you have what I refer to as the turnstile invitation, which means if there's ever anything we can do to help support, uh, get out there, or if you just want to come back and kick it like we've done today to catch us up on all the wonderful things, please let us know in your end, okay? You guys, faithfamilyfocus.net is one of the connectors. The others, one is uh, tickering across the bottom. And then of course there's this one, faithsugs.com. Now I know they have to do a show in just a, about seven minutes from now. So um, we're gonna let them go and I'm gonna say goodbye to all of you. Please join me tomorrow in Sunny Bond, Cleveland who has just moved everything across the world. Well, really just the country, but he moved his world. So it's pretty much the same thing. He's here tomorrow to share the changes in his life. Now, here it is, the commission. We come together to do something together as a collective. Let's say that we go out there today, every situation, every person that we encounter, if we just choose one to leave better than the way we found it, together we will change this world. Today is a stone soup story. Bring what you have and throw it in the pot of humanity. I'm Lauren Michaels Harris. I'll see you tomorrow morning out front when we do it all over again, God willing, on our next episode of Bathroom Moments. Be good and be good to yourselves. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, you two. Love you. Yeah, and you. Uh, listen, you guys, your show is in just a few minutes, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Pop over if you have, uh, I don't care what you have to do, get over and check them out. You guys, <laughs> thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Always right. a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. All right, you're welcome. Bye, everybody.